Hey you guys, long time no see. And I know you cannot probably see this, it's behind me, but uh, my cactus from Tiger, it's officially dead. The batteries died, not the cactus itself. I'm just too lazy to change the batteries. If you guys do not have Tiger in your country, then you are gonna be so thrilled to come to Denmark because it's like the best store ever if you are a shopaholic on a budget. They sell these small things which do not serve any purpose really, but they're just nice and you see them and you're like, I need to have it. So uh, yeah, if you're into this kind of stuff, then for sure Tiger is gonna be free. Anyways, without further ado, the reason you clicked on this video is because I am about to tell you a bit about how much does it cost to live and study in Denmark. Well, for that we have to take a look at three main points, which are gonna be the three chapters of today's video. The first chapter is how much does it cost to study in Denmark, the second chapter is gonna be how much does it cost to live in Denmark, and the third chapter is gonna be my personal ways of how I am able to save some money as a broke college student here in Denmark. So let's get into it. Okay guys, the point number one, uh, how much does it cost to study in Denmark? That is tuition fees and books. Uh, I have it written down down there. So if you are an EU student, you don't have to worry about this chapter, you can skip it. Well, no. You have to still care about the books. But if you are an EU student, it's for free. Um, if you did not know this before, now you know. Uh, if you are a non-EU citizen, then the tuition fees are between six to seven and a half thousand euros uh, per semester. That's a lot of money. Wait, this is in Europe? Woo! Wait, what? Okay, so it's about 6,000 euros a semester for what I've been studying. About the books, <clears throat> they are not so expensive, luckily. Um, well, they are still expensive, it really depends on what program you are into um, and how many books they will ask you to buy. I have personally paid about three to 500 kronas for books per semester on average. This is because I was shopping most of my books secondhand, and you should do that too. There are websites for this, uh, for example, dba.dk, but you can also use Facebook Marketplace because there is a lot of students that are leaving the country and they want to sell their books to someone else. Now for chapter number two, the accommodation. Uh, I can only tell you from my personal experience how much I've been paying for accommodation, and uh, bear in mind that I've been living in a very small town in the middle of no, in, <clears throat> in the middle of Denmark. So if you are gonna be living in Copenhagen, these prices are gonna be for sure different. But I have personally been paying for my first dormitory, uh, 3.7 thousand Danish kronas, which is more than 450 euros, and that was overpriced for the city. But I didn't know back then. Uh, right now I'm paying around 2,700 kronas, which is. Uh, something north of 350 euros, I think. And that is a reasonable rate for this city. Uh, if you are gonna be living in Aarhus, I think it's very reasonable to find something between 3 and 3.3 thousand. And if you are gonna be living in Copenhagen, uh, I think it's essentially the same, but the closer you get to the city center, it, the more expensive it will be. But it's still reasonable to find a room for 3.5 thousand, maybe 4 thousand. But um, that will be a stretch, there will be a lot of compromises to make, uh, but now we know, so that's the price for accommodation. And uh, I think I already made a video about this, but uh, in Denmark you are expected to pay at least two months deposit and uh, one month uh, upfront for the rent, so uh, yeah, this number times three is what you have to pay for accommodation. Second part of living here is transportation, you have to get to places, right? Uh, when it comes to public transport, the price is gonna be about 500 to 1000 Danish kronas, depending on um, what type of option you opt into. We have made a video about this, I'm gonna link it somewhere, uh, but essentially you can either cycle, you can take buses or you can get Ungdomskog. If you're gonna be cycling, for sure the cheapest method, uh, there is amazing bike infrastructure here in Denmark, so definitely you cannot go wrong with that. If you're gonna be taking buses, you can get uh, Kaiserkot. Essentially, the more you will be traveling, uh, the cheaper it will get. I would definitely not recommend you to buy like single tickets because that's expensive as hell. Uh, one single ticket like that costs around 25 Danish kronas, which is more than three euros, uh, and that gets you like 
one hour of um, riding on, on public transport. So definitely not very economically feasible. Um, the third option is to get Umdomskort and this applies I think only if you are living more than 25 kilometers from your university or something like that, uh, which means that you have to commute. And in that case, uh, you can uh, apply for this and they will essentially allow you to buy a seasonal pass for public transportation for very good price and you can travel anywhere you want as much as you want. So if you are thinking about uh, moving outside of Copenhagen uh, to save money, this is a great way of how to actually get to university. It's also mentioned in the video that I have linked uh, up above, so yeah, check it out. So that brings us to a grand total of, I would say, between 800 and 1000 euros a month. Uh, some people will tell you, tell you that it's uh, possible to survive with 600 euros and uh, it really depends on what kind of person you are. Uh, if you are able to uh, live on noodles and potatoes and pasta, then um, sure, you can survive on, on like very, very tight budget. Uh, we've all, all been there, we've all done it. Um, but if you are looking to live a decent life where you can actually focus on your studies, um, then yeah, prepare at least 800 or 1000 euros a month. The good thing is that here in Denmark you can get SU, which is a state scholarship if you are working as a European citizen at least for 43 hours a month, they will give you about 800 or 900 euros as a support. So if you're able to find work and uh, maintain this work, then uh, you're pretty much covered. If you are not from European Union, um, these are the numbers that you have to be working with, about 800 uh, euros to 1000 euros a month, depending on which city you will move to, because arguably the city determines quite a lot how much you will be paying in rent, um, and rent constitutes to majority of uh, the spending. Love these bottles. Whoever made this, thank you. It's just so good to have this and have always cold drink when you need it, especially in uni. And now for the point number three, which is ways that I personally use to save money in here. And I'm not really proud to talk about one of them, uh, so here it goes. Uh, the first way that I use to save money is that I use Too Good To Go app. What Too Good To Go essentially allows you is to buy all the products like groceries, um, bakery and uh, stuff from restaurants that was not sold that day and um, is only good for the day or the next day. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible at explaining things. But essentially you can, um, through the app, buy a full bag of groceries which is about to go wrong, but at the same time, not really, uh, for like really, really good price. We are talking like a huge bag of, of bread for uh, like five euros. Um, so if you will split it with your roommates, then you have bread for a week for like five euros. Um, there is also Lidl in the app, so you can buy, for example, meat and, and veggies. Uh, I once bought meat, uh, I think it was like 40 kronas, which is roughly six euros. And we couldn't even barbecue all of the bag in one day, and I think there was five of us. But just to show you how much food uh, you are getting, uh, I hope I have some pictures uh, that I can uh, put on the screen, so you have the idea. Uh, so yeah, I can definitely recommend using this app because it's just so good. It's good for the environment. It's good for your wallet. It's this app and this startup is is amazing and it's genius. And we should all do a bit more to stop food waste because. It is truly terrifying what you can find in dumpsters. That brings us to point number two, going to the dumpsters. And uh, <laughs> I've done this only once. Um, it's a bit humiliating, at the same time it's kind of funny when you open the dumpster and you're like... Beer, chocolate, meat and, and veggies and avocados. <laughs> this, this stuff would cost me like 150 kronas if I bought it 15 minutes before they throw it up. Which is like ridiculous, like it's a really really ridiculous. Um, you can find really nice produce in um, in the dumpster, like for sure I would not go for, for eggs, uh, milk, uh, cheese, uh, meat as I mentioned, I would definitely not touch that. But if you find something like, like, like a cans, right, like canned uh, goods, it's definitely fine. The thing is that shops have to throw these things out if there is any sort of leakage happening in the whole box of, of, uh, of cans, for example, um, so they essentially throw out completely fine food and it's up for grabs. So if you are really on tight budget and you're looking for a way to save money, um, you can just go behind one of the large stores. Uh, there are dumpsters if you will come after the closing time, 
uh, for sure you will not be the only one because there are regular Danish people that do it but you will be able to secure yourself uh, pretty decent things um, at the expense of uh, looking a bit foolish but at the same time not really because it's uh, I think it's kind of foolish to buy the thing 10 minutes before the clo 10 minutes before the closing time before they throw it up right um, so yeah just food for thought uh, just you know take a few friends drink a couple beers you want to really give a crap and you will just dig through and be like oh chocolate you know so have fun the third way how to save money here is uh, to buy bakery and uh, in general go shopping right before the closing time as we were saying with the dumpster if you're not that much into <laughs> diving into dumpsters which I completely get if you're not into that uh, I also have to be drunk to do it um, then at least go shopping like half an hour or one hour before the closing time because shops usually have um, discounts in this time especially on bakery products uh, it's in Lidl and in Rima you can go there half an hour before the closing time and all bakery is 50% uh, off which nope and the same is with uh, meat and salads and all of the things that they were hoping they will sell that day but uh, they didn't really and they don't want to throw it out so they'll just put it on like ridiculous discounts so now you know and the last way to save money and uh, okay I have not personally done this but I know about people that do it like this and it's a bit of an abstract idea but uh, bear with me here um, there are people that work in restaurant business and I think it's a great job to land if you are looking to alleviate this part of uh, your daily routine from your shoulders uh, you don't essentially have to cook if you're working in a restaurant because they always give you food in all of the cases with all of my friends that I know that work in a restaurant all of them uh, get to take home uh, whatever is left after the day and they can cook for themselves and essentially they don't really have to worry about groceries and buying stuff for themselves if they are working in a restaurant that is something to again think about if you are going to be moving here and looking for a job maybe doubling down on the restaurant business is going to be a good bet if you are looking to save uh, even more money on groceries and stuff so now we know the expected budget that you should be coming here with um, as i said in some previous video you should expect to have at least two or three months of savings before you are moving in a country just to be on a safe side because it's not always easy to find a job especially when everyone is looking for one um, the second thing is that now you know it's gonna be about eight to one thousand euros that you have to prepare that's gonna be your monthly budget so if you are not able to save up at least this amount then um, good luck and thirdly uh, very sorry for making this video so late uh, I know that most of you are maybe already on your way to Denmark but there is a reason why this project is on pause and also the reason why uh, this particular video is nowhere near the production quality that we were trying to achieve with the previous videos uh, the reason is that a whole team of amazing people are currently persuading, pers are currently persuading um, different projects, uh, me included. So there is simply not that much time that we can dedicate to this. Um, as you might know, this is a completely self-funded um, free time project that we are doing. Uh, it's non-profit and we wanted to keep it that way. Enjoy your time here. I hope this video helped you a bit. Uh, if it did, then uh, for sure give it a thumbs up. Uh, it shows me that you guys care and uh, I care when you guys care. So um, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna leave you with this and uh, stay awesome. <laughs>